Hi, um, I'm Cindy. And I'm Zoe. And we're about to start, I'm very excited, we're about to start the drawing for the Fairy Godmother from Saint-Brion. So um, before we start, I just wanted to make a little announcement to remind people that we are really happy that we have the opportunity to bring this to you, um, which we normally wouldn't because we would normally be working with kids who are living in homeless and domestic violence shelters and the projects. And because of the good fortune that New York City has managed to obtain tablets and internet access for all kids in schools where kids are living in um, more disadvantaged situations, it gives us the opportunity to present programming for everybody. So I just want to encourage you Whatever you can afford, whether it's $5 or $500 or $5,000 or $5 million, to please send a donation to um, the Time and Children's Arts Initiative. You can find us online. You can text to us at 717-77, time in, and just make a contribution. And that will allow us to continue our programming for kids when, um, when this is all over but hopefully we'll keep the channel anyway. But um, but your help and your support will be really important to us. So, and to kids. Um, we have lots of new projects coming up. And here we go with the fairy godmother. Zoe is going to teach me, as she says, I'm not a very good student. So, um, so I'm, but I'm the good model. You know, I, I'm reminding people if you're coming to draw for the first time, this is a really beautiful drawing. I'm gonna show you the picture again because, um, it was based on um, the the production that we actually had at the Metropolitan Opera, but this is based on the video, an older video that's online with Elise Gutierrez as the fairy godmother. And I just worship her singing and I worship her. She's so beautiful. So, and that costume is so fantastic. So here we go. Okay. Now, just to remind you, you don't need anything. This is just printer paper. Of course, you can have better paper. These we use 4B, um, 4B pencils, just because Zoe loves them. Mm -hmm. um, they stress her hands out less. Mm -hmm. Don't and, have to press so hard because it's a softer lead. Right. We also have at our eraser. disposal fantastic a sharpener. <laughs> an fantastic sharpener. I always recommend, you know, for all my kids, I always recommend a sharpener if you can that has a little catcher. This is a Japanese sharpener. It's a very cute sharpener. They make great sharpeners in Japan. Mm -hmm. um, and it will catch your, um, catch your shavings. A plastic eraser. Um, and well, we like this tough stuff, but there's lots of other little eraser, um, sticks. eraser sticks. I don't know, I might have another one here. No, you don't here. have another one here. I thought I had another one here, but no. anyway, and you will eventually need a Sharpie or um, some kind a of micron. micron Sharpie. Micron, here's a Sharpie, in case you don't know a thin what a Sharpie, Sharpie looks is probably like. better. Thin Sharpie would definitely be good for this um, project. And somewhere my Micron is, micron. here's a Micron, and Micron's always good. This is a, a 0 0.05, but you know, you can also order, if mm -hmm. you really love drawing, you can order a set of Microns um, that have different point sizes so that you can do different kinds of things. And as long as you're like thinking about supplies, something like this, um, this is a brush pen, always a fun thing to have. And here we go, Zoe started. Start. Yep. So now we're going to start by drawing um, a medium small circle towards the top of your page. You'll leave a little bit of space at the top and a lot of space at the bottom and put it in the middle of your page. Okay, let me see that. I am now going to do it. I'm going to make it a little darker than Zoe's. Um, Don't press too hard though. You can't so see this. But that I'm... circle is already a little big. Oh, really? Yeah, it's a little too big. Can I? It's can a little I keep too big. It? Can I keep it because? Well, the thing is that well, it's that... a little too big and you won't have room for your feathers All or right. anything. It's a little too big. Okay. You need to make it a little smaller. All right. In that case, you know what? I'm going to turn my page over. Um, I'm going to turn my page over. And so don't I'm... press so dark. Don't press so hard. Yeah, I won't press so hard. I'm making my circle smaller and I turn my page while I'm doing it because you know, don't think that the only way to draw a perfect circle is by just doing a continuous circle, right? 
this, that might not be a possible thing for you. See, here's mine, and I have a couple of little imperfections, so I am going to now use my tough stuff over here to um, erase the little things. Um, just one thing for mm -hmm. people who are first coming, that this is, this little circle is not her face, it's the skull, it's the bones of the skull from here to here, okay? Her hair is gonna go on top of that and her jaw is gonna go below it. So there is my newly finished circle. You can see it here, okay? So now you're gonna split that circle in half with a vertical line. And that's a guideline, so it's gonna be a very light yes. line, right? Try not to sketch. Okay, I'm gonna line. try not to sketch. Here I go, there's mine, da 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 Here's my coffee. Now you're gonna split the left side of the circle in half again. And why do we do that? These are, we're doing the eye lines now that show you where the eyes go. Okay, I'm doing mine. And now, after once you have that done, you can split the right side of the circle in half, like this. Okay. Make sure you're really finding the halves and not just drawing two lines on either side. Okay. Okay. And now we're going to come back to the left side and that side, that part on all the way on the left, we're going to split the part all the way on the left in half one more time and draw a slightly shorter line. And why are we doing that? This is, well, we're drawing what's called a three quarter view, which okay. is um, Can you where show your that? head is slightly turned like this. Slightly turned like that. So everything is in a slightly different place than usual. So can I, do you mind, Zoe, if I number my lines? Please. One, I'm two, I'm going to number my lines. Three, three, one, two, three, four. So starting from the left, one, two, three, four. Okay. That way, and actually, even though you, you may not want to keep them there forever, but you might want to keep them there forever. One of the things that I was thinking about is that you might want to keep those kinds of um, numbers on your lines or you might want to put something like little notes on the side of your paper so that when you go to draw it again you'll have the information because it's easy to forget. Okay. So now we're going to draw horizontal line one which is two-thirds of the way down the circle. This is what divides your eyebrows from your eyes. So, so that's, that's wanted, not half, it's too high. So I, I, you said two-thirds yes, so that's what I'm going to oh, um, just want to show I'm, I'm, something. So in case you can't eyeball Two thirds. What I'm doing is I just made some little lines, like one third, two thirds, right? So that if I were going to draw the lines, I would know that this would be one, two, three. So my two thirds of the way was that bottom set of lines. Sometimes you just need, um, you know, Zoe can look at things because she's been drawing for a long time and she knows where they go. And she also went to college to learn how to do this even better. But a lot of us don't draw all the time, haven't been drawing for like 20 years, so we need like, little helpers. So not the, 20, I'm only 25. Well, there you go. I'm only, I haven't been drawing you for have, 20 years. Exactly. You have actually been drawing, I was thinking about it, uh -huh. is that you started doing opera costumes for dad uh -huh. when you were three years old. So Yeah, but I didn't start do, taking drawing lessons no. until I was about like 11. Right. But at any rate, but you've been making art. But I've been drawing art. my whole life. Right. But mean, you've been drawing your whole life yeah. and making art. And, and what happens from just doing things is you get a sense of things. So, but I don't do these things. So, it's okay. So now we're going to draw a horizontal line two that touches the bottom of the circle. And the easiest way to do that is to start, again, start at the bottom of the circle, right? Draw your little line at the bottom of the circle and then just extend it out. Mm -hmm. There you go, now you can see I've done mine very beautifully. And now what you're gonna do is you're gonna measure from line one to line two, and you're gonna bring it down. So measure like this, and you're gonna bring it down to the to line two and make a point where that falls. So we're gonna make a horizontal line here, which is gonna be three. So the distance between two and three is the distance between one and two. So you measure and bring it down like that. Okay, and I'm gonna draw that line, that point into a line across. And in, of course, Zoe goes through this again quickly because she really knows how to do it. But for those of you who don't know how to do it, when she says measure this space, you're gonna freeze your fingers, mm -hmm. don't move them, and then you're gonna put them here mm -hmm. and, and at the bottom of that space. 
you'll draw your, your little mark and then your line. And then mm -hmm. if you want to check it, just go back the other way. Mm -hmm. Measure it and then go back. If it's the same, you're good. If it's not the same, it means that your jaw, That's this is the end you'll see in a minute. This is where your jaw is. And if it's not correct, your jaw is going to be weird. Mine is always a little weird, but... So now, coming off the side of the circle at, um, at the first line, you're going to draw a line curving in, not as severely as, as the circle, but it's, it's not going to pass the, this, this first horizontal, this, I mean, this first vertical line. It's not going to go past that. It's going to basically come down to where the first vertical line meets the second horizontal line. So you're not going to pass line one. You're yeah. coming off the circle. Does that look good? It should be rounder. Okay. Should see it should be a little rounder. You can come out first a little if that helps. Uh huh. Okay. It should be rounder. Mine was too straight. All right. Come out a little bit, and then come in a little bit. Okay. How's that? Is that better? You don't like that either. No, that's not right. I don't uh -huh. mean come out like that. I mean, it has to be a continuous, it has to be a continuous line. It has to come off the circle. So you can come out and off. You can't like start off the circle. Okay. It has to touch it, the circle. It's going to touch the circle and it's There you go. That's better. That's it. In. There you go. All right. So okay. now I'm going to wait. I have to show my, my good thing. So, you know, the way I solved this problem was I have to just start up a little higher in this circle. Can I have that eraser stick that he keeps doing? You yeah, may. Thank you. Okay. Do you see that? I have to start up a little bit higher. I made it darker so you can see. Can I see? Okay. And now... Don't start too much higher, though, if you're going to start higher. It didn't work because of the way my line one is. It just felt that it was too cramped. Okay. So now, you're going to draw... A you're going to curve back out just slightly, not too much. You don't want to make her face exactly chubby, but you want to make it round. So come back out in line two, and then come in to vertical line two. So it comes out in a... Like, it's almost a half heart shape. It comes out and then comes diagonally in to line two, where line two crosses line, line for vertical line two meets horizontal line three. Right there. Very good. Is that okay? Yeah, I'm you might want to. It's, it's, too, it's a little too round. Maybe make it, okay. make that Got diagonal it. higher. Here, yeah. I'm going to show you how mine is too round. Too so, round. you know, not right. Mine is too round. Yep. I'm going to erase and start again. Here I go. All right. Hold on. So just a little bit round. Okay. It's a little bit round. Like that? Does that look good? Like no, that? see that's still very round. Actually that's alright. Alright, well here's yeah, more diagonal, but it's it could right. be more diagonal, but it here you go. Diagonal. Mine is not perfect. Then from there you're gonna come back up to where line horizontal line two meets vertical line four. Like that. You're gonna come diagonally back up. Make sure that your chin doesn't go lower than line three. Make sure it stays right at line three. And then go up. Is that good like that? Yeah, see, this is just too round. You have you have to make it a little straighter. Uh, you just, if, see, if it's too round, it looks uh, wonky. All right. Looks wonky. Ugh. And you see, this is what happens when you make your lines too dark. Mm -hmm. All right. Wait, I'm about to do it again. Hold on. There you go. That's perfect. All right, wait. I'm going to show you my dark. perfection. Here comes perfection, people. Um, perfection. Okay. Okay, and now we're going to make an ear. Coming right up from that jaw at line two, and it's going to go almost all the way up to line one. Ear's going to be big at the top, small at the bottom. And it's going to touch line four right there, vertical line four. See, it's going to be right on this side of line four. Okay, I think so I it's a little the... too big at the bottom though. The lobe is a little booty. You know, it's a little dangly, you know? Oh, okay, we don't want a don't dangly, dangly lobe. lobe. Okay, wait, I'm making my lobe smaller. Hold on. There you go. Is that good like that? Yep. Okay, I here. mean, there are a lot of different kinds of ear lobes. Here, right. I, I'm have, the, to a kind I of... have the dangly lobe. So. No, no, you have a normal ear lobe. You You're just wearing heavy earrings? No, no, I have Mom, a Mom, without the ear lobe, uh, without the earrings, it wouldn't, it's just pulling on your ear. You have a normal ear. 
Okay, if you say so. I do say so. It's, it's just pulling on your ear a little, makes it look a little danglier than it is. Okay. That's what happens when you wear very, very right? long earrings, yeah. Those are my fairy godmother earrings. So now you're gonna draw a little squiggle on the inside of the ear. How's that squiggle? Very okay. good. Like that? Yep. Squiggle, squiggle, my squiggle is there. You see it? You too can have a squiggle. So now we're gonna do the nose. So you're gonna draw a slightly curved line slightly curved little diagonal like check almost right beneath line two meaning vertical line two so on vertical line two touching horizontal line two and right underneath it a little tiny curve check coming up okay a little tiny curve check uh two on line two like that like that little no 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 just like a little I'm gonna draw it bigger. It's the shape you're drawing is this. Oh, that doesn't look like a check. All right. Not not that kind of check, like like a tick. <laughs> a tick. Okay. Let's see. No, like is a, this good? That's like too that? big. Smaller. Uh oh. Too big. Smaller. Smaller. Here I go. Smaller. Smaller. Like that. Yeah. Like that. Exactly. All right. Here it is. You can barely see it, but now here it is. Can you see that? Yeah. It's like a little. Can you show that shape again? Just show your picture with that shape. So then you're going to draw right next to it a little smaller check. So it's going to look like that. So either like this, if you can see that, or like this, if you can't. And, and so that little smaller check next to it is the nostril. Yeah. Like that? It's a little close. but. Because if you make it too close, it looks like like a totally flat nose with just two holes in the face. You know? Make it too far apart, it's a huge nose. But if you make it too close, it's something weirder. I feel that my whole nose is wrong. No, no, no. Don't erase that part. The, no, the whole nose is not wrong. Just the nostril. This is a it's a difficult shape to draw. All right. Honestly. It looks simple, but it's actually not very simple. So I have that shape, and then I have that little dot like that? Yes, exactly, that's right. All right, that's right. I'm sure that you're gonna have trouble seeing that, so there you go, I have that so shape now, and the dot. Okay, so now, you're gonna draw a little line on the top. So, here it is big. Um, you draw this little slightly curved, but basically straight line that touches the top part of the check, then a little, the little dot like that, and it looks like this, no bigger than that. Okay, so it's going back in the direction of the dot, like that? No, that's going up. Yours is going up. And it shouldn't go up. It should Not go straight? Not diagonally up. Yeah, pretty much. All right. Mine is wrong. Should be smaller. I told you I'm not really such a good student. I mean, I'm a trying student. No, you're. that's not, that's not what that? I meant is at all. Is that good? Too big. That is good. Oh, okay. That is good. That 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 is not being you good or bad at drawing has nothing to do with being a good student. Hey, I have directional issues. I bet other but that's not what that's not what my complaint was ever. My okay, complaint wait, was that wait. you're my mom. Oh yeah, that you don't listen to me. <laughs> that's its own thing. Tisk tisk. Kids, listen to me. Okay, kids, be sure you're listening. Okay, I'm ready. Okay. You know, I have a question for you. I feel like my jaw is too angular compared to yours. Then just make it rounder. Right? Look at this, guys. Do you see? My jaw's a little too but angular. But you can just make it rounder. You made the line really straight, so but just make it I'll make it a rounder. little rounder. I'm going to just erase my line. As I'm looking at Zoe's, I feel that mine is not the right shape. So I'm going to fix. Okay, here I go. I'm fixing so a little now, bit. On top of line <laughs> two... On top of vertical line two, right underneath horizontal line one, going about halfway down between lines one and two, you're gonna draw a gently curved line for the bridge of the nose. Okay, a gently curved line. It's curving to the left a little bit, right? Towards and the um, towards the towards the side of the face. Turned. Okay, so I'm gonna try that, and it's kind of half of that box. Exactly. Like that? Yes. There I am. That's the, you know, that is the bridge of the nose when you're, that's this piece. So now we're gonna draw one eyebrow. So, you're gonna start from the touch in the side of the face, 
at line one, touch the side of the face on line one, come up to vertical line one, and when you get to vertical line one, make uh, basically it's almost horizontal line, coming almost all the way to line two, vertical line two, that is. So start horizontal line one, go up to vertical line one, and then come across almost all the way into line two. Like that? Very much indeed. So now, do I make it a little thicker? We're I gonna go back to it. Oh, okay. Okay. So now, with um, the other eyebrow, we're gonna start just a little on the other side of line four, and you're gonna come up in between lines three and four, and then you're gonna come across straight past over line three towards line two, but not coming all the way in. Otherwise, you'll get a unibrow. Mm. So it's a little curved. Like that? Yeah, like that. Yeah, so it's a little curved, right? You know what's funny? You draw better when you're just listening to the instructions and not watching. Yeah, well, I can I've actually never... see them through your paper, so. Oh, okay, that makes sense. And I, I have this drawing to look at, too. Oh, that's just so interesting. I've me. never encountered anyone who learns like that, actually. Well, you know, I happen to be an You're oral special. learner. No, I work very well, oh. actually, um, from oral. That's why I'm really good at languages. Because when I hear things. You don't want to go all the way past line four, though. You want to stay on this side of line oh, four. Oh, okay. Okay. Because whose eyebrows grow into their ear? That is a good question. Okay, I'm, I'm using my eraser again. Oh, yeah, that does look much better, mm, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. Because, yeah. like, your eyebrows, like, I, I don't really have eyebrows so much. They're very light. But your eyebrows, my eyebrows actually grow, like, about down to here. And um, basically, from this angle, um, there's a sort of amount, there's an amount for shortening, which is um, when things look like they're a different size than they are because of the angle you're seeing them at. Like my arm looks really short right now, for instance. Um, because of that, it kind of looks like, um, right. which um, which it doesn't. And um, and because, um, you know, if you're from the profile, then it looks nothing like that. But um, at this angle, it does look like it comes all the way to here. So the next step is we're going to draw um, the eyes. So we're going to start by doing some guidelines, which is we're going to do... Um, she has amazing eyes. We're going to do some um, oval, oval guidelines. Um, and then now I'm talking like Jeff Goldblum. So, <laughs> so we're going to draw some vertical ovals right underneath that top, that line one. So leave a little space between there and line one. You can even draw a line across as a guideline if you want. Make sure they start and stop at the same places. Oval guidelines. Okay, I have to look at your paper. So the first one is going in box, is right the so line. So the first one line, one eye is on vertical line one, the other one is on vertical line three. Okay, vertical line one, and it's an oval. Yes. And the one that's on vertical line three is supposed to line up at the bottom exactly yes. with that one, right? You can draw guidelines across So here, I'm just yeah. gonna draw, you see, I'm just put that little guideline in there under my circle, because my mm -hmm. eyes never line up. It's really, I, I don't know, that is the hardest thing for me. It is, it is hard. to get the eyes to line up properly. It's very, it is very hard. But the one that's on line three is gonna be a bigger, is it bigger than, a little uh, rounder and bigger? Yeah, a little tiny bit. A, a little, little tiny, tiny bit, bit rounder and bigger, because Hendo Park, who, you know, if you, um, his website is hanaroda.net. Um, who is our, that. Hannah Roda, H-A-N-A-R-O-D-A, -A -A, if you want to have a really great time looking mm -hmm. at some incredible um, comics and manga style work. Um, H Hendo was Zoe's teacher, and he was our first manga teacher, and he did a book for Scholastic with me. And he always talked about the fact that when you're in three-quarter, you have a more slender, the eye that you see is a little slender, more narrow on the far away side. The eye that's closer to you looks a little bigger and rounder. Of course, she's only turned very slightly. Yeah, it's it's more extreme depending on how, how extreme how your, far your turn you're turned. Is. So now we're going to draw the tops of each eye, the eyelids. So it's gonna start a little bit past the oval on both sides, come up, come up, and then go back down, go back down, like that. So the 
the kind of the crest of it is exactly on the line, right? Huh? In other words, <laughs> the, the, the point of it is on line one and on line three. I just need to say because I can't, I'm, I can't. Can't think of it that way. No, 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 no. That like whatever you just said, I'm sure is fine. But, <laughs> but I, I need to make it very clear that you are not a bad student just because you don't draw very well yet, and you're not a bad student just yet, be yet, yet, and you're not a bad student just because you can't tell light right from left, or I have, light from left, it's I, light from left. Just that has not. It's if if you can't get better at drawing and you're frustrated all the time, it's not you who's the problem, it's your teacher. Okay. That's, that's... Hey, you're a good teacher though. Why, thank you. I all like right, so teacher. I am, um, so I, if, I, if you already knew how to do everything, then you wouldn't need to be a student. Too true, too true. Okay. Is that okay? Uh, yeah. So I'm showing my. Oh, this one is the, like this one is a little lower, so make it thicker on the top because we're gonna make what them you mean thicker. It makes a little lower. This one's a little lower. It doesn't make a little lower. It is a little lower. See, this one is comes a little higher than this one, so just make it a little thicker on the top because we have to make them a little thicker anyway. Okay. So if you're finding, if you're noticing that one looks a little higher than the other, one looks a little lower, we're gonna make them thicker anyway. So just make them a little thicker. Okay, I'm making them a little thicker. Um, okay, so you make them a little thicker like this. Have to do that anyway. So How's that? Is that okay like that? That is much better. There you go. Okay, now I'm much better. Da -dum, da -dum. No, so these are even thicker than mine, so. Make them a little thicker. No, make mm -hmm. them a little thicker. You know, each of these things is, they're so small and yet they're so mm -hmm. key. I'm sorry, yeah, Zoe, let me true. reach uh -huh. over you. They're so key because when you look at Zoe's original drawing. Which was so much fun to do. <laughs> um, you can see if you look at the eyes really closely. I mean, the the level of detail and the the kind of the line weight, the flow of the lines is so, um, is so defining. It's, you know, it's just a, basically a circle, you know, or a, an oval. But the way the kind of, how can you say it? It's like the finesse of it is what makes it really, um, really special. So that's what, you know, what those of us who are beginners need to work towards. And, you know, the way to get really good at that is to copy the drawings of people you like. When you see someone, who, when you see an artist whose drawings really have that special quality where they, they know how to put things in just the right places that makes it look magic, copy their drawings, copy the heck out of their drawings. And yeah, that's what I do. Uh, so now we're going to draw a little line in the corner of each eye. So it's not going to touch the very side. It's going to be slightly in. And it's going to come almost all the way down to the bottom of the oval, but not quite. Like this. Hmm, it's a kind okay. of cat eye thing. Okay. So it's actually outside of the little... Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Oval. Okay. Mm -hmm. And wait, I want to see... Remember, the... the oval is just the guide oval. Right. Okay, so here, that's my little cat eye thing, if you can see it. Now you're going to draw a little tiny um, flat, straight, short bottom line touching the guide ovals. That's your bottom eyelid. And it's not too heavy. No. If the heavier, it's funny, the bottom eyelid, if the, if you make it really heavy, it has a very different effect than making the top eyelid heavy. If you make the top eyelid heavy, it looks like eyelashes and it looks kind of sparkly. If you make the bottom eyelid heavy, it looks like really heavy eyeliner. And it, it looks kind of, it, yeah. it doesn't, it, it, it looks, it looks heavy. It doesn't look like, um, you can make the top line really thick and it won't look heavy, but the bottom line, it's not like that. The bottom line is the thin pointy part of your pencil. So now we're going to draw, I'm going to redefine the guide oval lines. So in this, in this eye closest to the side of the face, you're going to redefine 
the one on the right as a rounder line, and the one on the inside is going to be concave. It's going to go in in this direction. I'm not sure how well you can see. All right, let me look at that. So it's going to go in here. That's the one on the and the towards the nose. So the one. Yes. So the one on the, on the other side outside of the nose. is I mean, rounder, <laughs> right? Wait, what am I? And the one towards and the, on the nose in. side. The comes nose side comes in. in yeah. Okay. Mm, nice. The trick here is to have very little of the bottom eyelid showing. You don't want it to be none, but you want very, very little sticking off the sides. Just barely. It, it does something special when you can only see a tiny, tiny bit of it. Very nice. And now this one is just going to, you're just going to redefine it as two round lines and leave just a tiny, tiny bit of that bottom line. Okay, let me look at that. So... That one is, I'm redefining it a little bit. So it's just like that. And then a little bit inside of that other line, kind of like that. So it looks like a lantern almost, right? I don't know if you can see how well yeah, you yeah, that's a very good point. see it on mine, but kind of looks like a lantern. So now we're gonna draw an upper eyelid, which is going to be broken in the middle. So basically where the lines are, where one and three are, you're gonna break it. So it's gonna be, it's gonna just echo that top eyelid, it's be right above it, and then it's gonna break right in the middle. And I'm sharpening my pencil because... I'm still good, uh, pencil -wise. So this is below About, line one. Yes, yeah, still, we're still below line one. Still below line one, and it's just little. It's not, uh, it doesn't go all the way out. No. But it does, it is parallel to, um, right? It is parallel to the actual. Yeah, exactly, yep. There we go, there's me. You can see me good like that. Okay. So now we're gonna draw out some eyelashes on the top coming out. So just on the top end where the, where the point in the corner is coming out, coming out like that. And they're slightly curved upwards, they're slightly right? Slightly curved upwards, yeah. Um, okay, so. And you did, how many did you do? It doesn't matter. However many I like? Yeah, however many look good in that amount of space. One. Sorry. Two. Three. And you have them getting like progressively longer, is that? Yeah. And, um, and this, uh, like on, once you start talking about that, like on this side, they're actually progressively shorter. And on this side, they're, 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 short then long then short again but, but you don't have to do that on this side meaning we'll see on, go ahead yeah on, if you move yours all the way yeah. so like you don't have to do this because it's kind of a lot but on this side they're getting progressively shorter as it comes down on this side they start short get longer and then get shorter again because it's kind of coming in a curve i like eyelashes a lot yeah <laughs> let's let's call a spade a spade so um, that's not the correct expression. Don't make them going down like that though. Oh, okay. Don't do that because it'll look like a, you know those dinosaur tails that have like the kind of the thing on top oh, of the like thing? Oh, like stegosaurus? Thing? Yeah, it'll look a little bit like that. So I'm now- Taking um, that off, sorry. So now um, on the bottom, you're gonna do some eyelashes and they're just gonna come out this way and come out that way. Yeah, okay. Anyone who's seen my drawings knows I really like eyelashes. The lashy That's people. a comment I get a lot, the eyelashes. Sometimes people just and say the like, yeah, lashes they they curve. So if I'm talking actually, about actually, mine that, aren't really curved. Mine they're are a little curved, actually. A little bit, the... but they're actually straighter than they are curved. Uh, people tend to do curved eyelashes. So when you make them straight, it, especially on the bottom, it kind of comes as a shock, and it's very intense looking. It's subtle but intense. So you think I should straighten mine out a little bit? It's just an issue. Okay. You can taste it. You don't have to. Here's my eyelashes. Student eyelashes. Mm. Okay. Very nice. So now. You're going to do a curved line in each eye. So the curve is going to be on the outside. So on the on the outside side. So like on this side, it's a curve right here. And on this side, there's a curve right there. See that? See that little curve? Okay. No, but I'm going to look now. Now, so where is this curve? Right here. Here and here on the outsides. On the outside. On the inside of the eye, but on the outside sides. Oh, I see. Okay, so kind They're of They're on just, opposite sides. Just like that? No, it needs to be wider than that. What do you mean it needs to be wider? It's not than thick that? enough. Oh. No, no, no. You can't color it in. It needs to be white. It's 
the Ugh. highlight. Don't off. Oh, it's the highlight? This is why I say you're a bad student. It is a highlight. It is a highlight. It's because you're, you're, you're uh, a grown woman who whines. <laughs> Okay, okay, blame. okay, okay. Now I made a mess here, so I have to like fix that. So, oh, I see. So it, I need more space. No, no, you've done it again. It's too I don't know. Erase it. I okay. can't. It's too you much can't. of a mess. No, I can't. Crazy. I can't okay. tell us, this is ridiculous. This is why. See, this This is it. Don't whine. That's the only thing that can make you a bad student right. is whining. Well, all, all, Good students don't whine. All students watching this, all children don't whine. Although I know that everybody whines. I don't tolerate whining in my class. Okay. Wine, wine, clean up. Like this. Line. See? Yeah. No. Yeah, I that see. Was, I, that was and where is this? And how does it go on the other, other side? side? Same thing right over here on the other side. So this goes from the top to the bottom, in other words. Yeah. Like that. Yeah, exactly. It goes from the top to the okay. bottom. Okay. And then. So it goes from the top to the bottom. I don't know if you can see it on mine. Um, can we look at it on the actual drawing? Sure, Hang yeah. On one second. Because it's really hard well, to see. Basically, what you're going to do is you're going to divide that. It makes it easier when you see it like this. You're going to divide it with little tiny lines like this. I'm going to show you like them. this. This makes it really easy to see. You can see all the way on the far side over here, there's a little line that has like... It's divided with little lines. Divided with little lines. That's a highlight. A highlight means where the light hits the eye. Okay, so now we're dividing divide it with little lines. lines. Yeah. Okay, whoa, very tough. Okay, da -da 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 -da. but not too many. Otherwise, we'll just end up looking completely black. Okay, I put a couple. A couple, yeah. Okay, I did maybe three, four. Yeah, that's what I did. Four. Three or four. So now we're going to draw in the top right corner of each eye um, a one round highlight. I'm going to slightly different places in the eye, actually. No, no, they're okay. It's just, oh, it's actually, it's the same, but there's like this sort of shadow from another line overlapping it, and it makes it look different. Okay. Mm. There's, there's mine, and, and I'm going to actually, I'm just going to grab this so that you can see this, because this is... Make sure you're working very small right now. The highlight, it's tiny, but there you can see it there. You see that little, the little round circle? Mm -hmm. Up there, that's another, that's a standard highlight. So and this now, is a fancy it, eye. Yeah. And now underneath it, you're going to draw a tiny little smaller highlight right underneath each one. Like this. A smaller highlight. Oh, like another teeny little circle attached, like almost like a bubble that's attached to the, to that. And here, take a look at it in here. Let me just see, there it is. It's kind of like, actually, it's not exactly attached in this, but you'll see it. See, it's like a double highlight, which gives her a more sensitive and kind of glowing, youthful, tearful kind of, very sensitive look, right? She's like, oh. So now you're going to draw a star, this shaped star inside each eye. And for some of you, the only way to do it might be to fill in some of this space black, but the good thing is that we're gonna fill in that space black anyway. So like, it's so small that um, to do it, I had to kind of like carve away the shape by coloring in certain parts black. If you can't fit it in, that's okay too. So wow. That's... It's gonna end up looking like this. Can you do me a favor and just hold up the drawing so they can see sure. that while I attempt, I can't even see that small. I need a magnifying glass to do this. You need reading yeah. glasses. That's true. I need reading glasses because I'm an old mother and I've lost the, the star is in there somewhere, but oh, well, can I take okay. a look? It's kind of there. I don't see it. <clears throat> oh, is this the star? Okay. Hold on. Get it. There you go. Nice. That's it right there. The tiny one. Okay. You need your reading glasses on. Oh, it's so tiny. You need to do this side too. Oh. Oh. Where are your reading glasses? I don't know. 
And this side is too hard to do because just I just color it in. Like, I can't make, even make a little circle see. there instead. If you can't, if you don't have room for it, then just make a little circle. Here, this is what I came up with. Less than perfect, but I want you to look for a second again okay. Okay, at this. Stop. No, no, you have to look for a second again at the close up of the eyes in case you, you know, in case you need to. Uh, I just want to make sure I'm showing the right thing. There we go. Eyes, 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 eyes. Okay. <sighs> really crummy day out it's okay. true so now we're going to do the mouth so we're going to start by doing a guideline for the mouth which is going to be a little smile underneath underneath the nose and it's going it's not going to come any farther than the beginning of this eye and the beginning of this eye it's going to stay in between those two and leave some room leave some room above above it for the for an upper lip situation so from this eye to that eye. There you like go. That? Yep, yep. Okay. I did and mine. This is my worst. This is my totally worst thing is the mouth. I'm not a mouth person. Like a mosquito bit my face. You know what I'm thinking, Zoe? I'm thinking that what we should do is the face <laughs> and the hair, and then we'll save yeah. the body for tomorrow. I because, think that's a very good idea. Because it's so much drawing. Yeah, it really is. We don't want We've to been doing about. 20 minutes and we still haven't finished the face. Right. Well, and actually we did, before the phone call, we did another oh two minutes. God. So it's already been about over half oh an my hour God. of drawing. So we're going to just do face and hair today. We'll come back to the body tomorrow. It'll give you two days. and 40 minutes and we just finished the eyes? Oh, you know, my God. Honestly, when we work in school, this happens to us all the time. about it. We do usually part of a drawing and then we'll come back. And then we'll do the body on another day. Sometimes the body will take two days. You know, we have an hour long class and then we'll spend um, one class, like another hour, just coloring, maybe doing background and stuff like that, which is more like free drawing. Okay, so now you're gonna put a dip in the middle of, the, of this. This is the inside of the top lip. So right in the center, you're gonna put in a dip. See that? Yeah. A dip right there. A dip in the center of this little. Can I see that before you do anything? Because so I'm going on top of this and, and I'm putting a dip. A dip. Whoa, whoa, that's too far of a dip. A very gentle dip. Mm. That's like a that's like a dive. Not a dive, just a dip. Mm, a dip. You know, a dip is when you put one foot in a lake. Like that? No, 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 no. no. Ah, I told you what, 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 it No, no. You, look, you're, what are you looking at? This is. <laughs> You drew a line in the middle of the mouth. This is a gentle curve right. in the middle of a larger gentle curve. I'm starting again. Here I was here. And then... Although you could leave it and we could say it's Tom Burke. I like Tom Burke. but I do like Tom Burke too. But I want to... Um... Okay, how's that? Is that any better? No, you didn't do anything. <laughs> oh, I was so no, gentle. No, no. It's not a line. It's a curve. You're drawing a curve on... Look, you have a curve like this, everybody. You got a curve like this. I doubt anyone else will have this problem because I've never seen... My mom specializes in having problems that I've never seen any child ever have in over 10 years of teaching. So you start with a curve like this. And then right in the middle, you're going to draw a gentle other curve like this. Ah, it's gentle, not a line. There are no curve. lines involved here. It's just, it's the inside of the top lip. So if you look... Like that, like that, like that. Yes, yes, like that. Yes, like, like that. that. Like that, like that. Here, look, look here. Mom, put your face close to the camera and open no. your mouth a little. No, a little. Just a little. Okay, look at my mouth. Okay, I have a big overbite, so it makes it really clear. But um, see this part? Oh, my mouth is kind of the wrong shape. If you look at Barbara Streisand's mouth, <laughs> or like Michelle Pfeiffer's mouth, this part right here comes in a little. Like this. See, it's straight, dips down, then straight again. Okay. You're very clear on Barbara Streisand. Well, okay. I guess if you need to know, go to Barbara. Yeah. Barbara.com, no. <laughs> go to Barbara. <laughs> you can go watch, like, on a clear day. You can see forever a Hello Dolly or something. I know. So, um, now right underneath it, you're going to draw an opening. This is the inside of the mouth. This is this part. Um, Wait a minute, I don't get it. You're going to draw... Show me on a bigger thing here. Show me on your bigger picture. Like this. So I'm just drawing a little U under the little... Like this. Okay. <laughs> Wait, show me that again. So it's not exactly from the corner. <laughs> ah, you 
I am not a mouse. Not from the corner. No, not from the corner. Exactly. No, you're starting from, from the corner. No, no. I'm there not. you go. That's better. Okay, you understand you're drawing the inside of the mouth, yes. right? Okay. Kind of. Okay, is Do that you, good? Is that okay? Too yeah. big? No, but can you erase that part on the top, though? Because it's... What part on the top? Oh, my God. You have no idea what you're drawing. That's what the problem is. You have no idea. The problem is that you... See, this is the problem right my here. My concept is not correct. Yeah, see. You don't exactly have it right. Look. What you're drawing is this part right here. See this? That's what you're drawing. It's the Show inside that on of the, the picture. What you've just drawn is this part on the top and then this part underneath it. And then we're going to do that little line and then this line. Because what this is, is so when you have, wait, basically what you're going to end up with is a shape like this. And actually, if you're ready, you can do it. You can draw the bottom and you can draw a little curve on the top. Because what this is, is it's a variation on... Um, basically, it's a variation on this shape. It's a simplification of this shape, so you don't have to draw the contours all the way around because it's a little, this is a little much when you draw it like this. But in your original drawing, you have like a little hole in between the... You don't need the hole. I like the hole. If you want I'm the hole, you can have the hole. In. So, essentially, it ends up looking like this. I want mine to look like yours, and I like the way your little hole is, so I want to have okay. a little hole, too. Draw a little hole. I want to have a little hole. Can you show the picture with the little hole? Uh, yeah, absolutely. See how she has a little hole? It looks very elegant, don't you think? I just realized I'm like an encyclopedia of famous mouths. <laughs> I'm glad to know that. Okay. Uh, what? Draw the, the, the top indent. You need the top. Oh, the indent. top indent. Mm -hmm. If I'm being honest, your indent on the top is a little too intense. My indent on the top. Well, this line on this line on the inside is like it's like this. So you have it. <laughs> you know, I, I'm just gonna leave my mouth. You Where guys, you you, you, here's my bad mouth. Okay, here's my bad mouth. It just goes to show that you can make a bad mouth. It, it will not look terrible. It's, but here, here's like the good looking I mouth. I think the problem is there you go. Good looking mouth. See this that? is hard to do because no one ever expects. Okay. It's hard to do because no one ever expects to be drawing the inside of the mouth. People always expect to be drawing the outside of the mouth because that's like logical. So if you don't know exactly what you're drawing, it comes out wrong because you can only draw something if you understand what you're drawing. If you think you're drawing a squirrel and you're actually drawing an elephant. It will not look good. It'll look really weird. So it's important to remember when you're doing this, uh, you're drawing this part of the mouth and then you're adding a little bit of this and then just this right there. <laughs> right. Because that's a typical manga style drawing. It was in the 70s. Right. Okay. Refreshment time. I hope that you have something to drink too to uh, keep you refreshed as you're working really hard. Mmm. My coffee refreshment. Notice I put on good earrings for you. They're so have? nice. Put on nice earrings. I Your hair a, looks fantastic. I did a good hairdo for you. All right. Okay. So, hair time. Oh my oh. god, we're done with the face. Woo! <laughs> so tired. <laughs> okay, so it's it's hair time. Um, so we're going to start by doing a guideline for the bangs. So from line, from the side of the head, a little bit up to line three, we're going to draw just a light guideline. Don't make it too low. Don't make it too high. The average person's hair starts about three fingers up. So your hairline is three fingers from your eyebrows, typically. So is that, would that be three fingers? No, it's a little low. Make it a little bit higher. Think it's a little, a little low. You don't want hair to be too high because it looks bald, but you don't want it to be too low because it looks like, um, I don't know, something else weird. And we're crossing over hairs. line three? Just slightly. Okay. okay, here I go. Here I did it. In case, let me just show you my line. Here it is. Okay. So now, coming up and around that line at line three, you're going to make a curved line that goes down almost all the way to the eyebrow. Uh-huh. So like a hook, kind of. So a little hook that goes up oh. above. Wait, hang on. Don't go away. Don't go away. Don't go away. Give me a minute. Give me a minute. Give me a minute. Do, 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 do. Like that? Exactly. Okay, wait. If it's exactly, let me show you exactly. Do you see that, like, little hook thing? Over there, almost like a kind of a C. 
but not so C. Oh, then you're gonna come back up like this. All right, let me see that little guy. Okay, got it. So now we're going to, we're gonna come back to that and we're gonna start by doing I'm already piece next exhausted. To the hair, the hair is too. exhausting. So now we're gonna do a piece next to the ear, touching the ear like this. The hair is not as hard as it looks, this hair. And I should know I did it twice because I went over it with a thicker pen. But there's a lot of that is but that's true that there's a lot of detail. So this one yeah. is a swoop that's going down mm -hmm. to Hang on one second. It's going down to line two. It does not need to go all the way down to line two. It's unnecessary. Okay. Hair is not exa an exact science. Everyone's hair is different. Also, there's haircuts. It's not like an arm. You don't get arm cuts. I mean, you, you, your arm could get cut, but you know what I mean. You don't get like an arm. Like your hair, people's hair, there's no guide. There are no real guidelines for hair in a certain sense. Like you can't measure hair is what I'm trying to say. No, but you know, the thing about hair is that it's one of the really, like eyes. These are the really defining things of the style. I, I'm just saying that you cannot measure okay. hair. There okay. is no measurement for hair. All right. I have my unmeasured V of hair is now in place. And now you're gonna draw another one on top of it like this, coming up, t touching it, and coming up to like the eyebrow, basically. Just next to the eyebrow. All right, so this one is gonna start at the, it's gonna go above this little guy, and it's going up. Not over the eyebrow, just next to the eyebrow. Not over the eyebrow, next to the eyebrow, like that, right? Yes. You will just cover your eyebrow. It's all right. You can cover a little bit of your eyebrow. That's fine. Okay. So now you're going to draw another thing shape that covers it like this. So it's going to go right next to the eyebrow, covering these things right at line four. All right. Let's see that again. So that is at line four. Hang on, hang on, hang on. It's halfway as high as the other guy. I like the idea of the fang shape. It has to cover these lines, so it has to touch these lines. I got it. It has to touch line one. No, 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 no. No, it has to touch the hair lines, not the guidelines, the hair. What do you mean the hair it has to. The hair has to connect to the hair, Mom. Right. You can't just have hair floating in space, but see, your hair doesn't touch. Ah, I see. Okay, so here we go. Yeah. So this guy's going to come It's not up. about measuring the hair. It's about the logic that hair does not just grow in tufts. It touches. It's one <laughs> continuous thing. Okay, so in other words... If your hair is growing in tufts, you in, got a problem. In other words... <laughs> Hold on. In like other that. words, the V... Well, here, let you me... can't see like that. How can I show it? Now I can the, see. The V over here, where's that little V? Yeah. This little fang that we did has to come up high enough so that this little fang exactly. and it are together. Everything in hair needs to be touching at some you point. You can see how the hair is all, well, this doesn't look like it's touching anything, but it is. Yeah, but that's just because you have a silver spot. That's true. And it makes it look... Shiny. Yeah. It makes it just it kind connected. of invisible, yeah. But, I mean, hair doesn't literally all connect, but hair grows, like, in, in like, clumps, basically. Hair tends to stick together in pieces. And if there was suddenly, like, a very noticeable space, like, if, if I didn't have, like, this hair right here... I would look a little bit weird. weird. You would look like you were bald there. Exactly. Okay, got it. All right. So now you're going to draw what I like to call a snake tongue, which is like two little fang shapes right here, connecting this piece of hair to this piece of hair like this. Ah, uh, the snake tongue. Okay, so snake tongue. Um... Like that, just like two little V's. Exactly, and then you're gonna draw, going over the ear, one more piece of hair like this. Going over the ear, attached to the other one, like that. Here I go. I can't say that mine looks as good as Zoe's, but you know, but you get the idea. So now, We're gonna draw a snake tongue on this side of the face, like this. Touching the head, make sure it touches the head, and comes over towards this guideline. I am so self-conscious of the way I speak. Whenever I do these videos, I always okay. say towards. Towards. <laughs> That's okay. not how I talk. So, 
but this one comes kind Start. of just above the eyebrow. Yes, yes. And it goes in and it I goes kind of out a little bit. Okay, wait, out mm -hmm. and in. But yeah, exactly. Okay. So now we're gonna draw some cur some kind of curving up lines that touch this guideline. So we're gonna start with one, starting from where we left off, and it's gonna go up. Yeah. All right, let me see that. So that is a curving line that's gonna go up, and it's gonna go, oh, it's going to line two. Uh, and like then, that? Yeah, and then you're gonna draw another one underneath it like this. Okay, and that one's gonna go up to line, past line two. Uh, and then you're gonna draw a okay. couple more until you finish this off like this. So you go all up. the way over that line. Up. Yes, very good. Okay. So now. Okay, there's me. And what you're drawing, can you just show it in here so yeah. that they can it's, see it's what the you're... the bangs that are up. She has some bangs that are like jowled up or something or pushed up. Like she has really she thick does, hair. does actually. When you watch and, and in the notes, you'll see, I'm gonna give you a link to the opera so that you can watch the scene, um, which is just, I don't know, one of my favorite scenes of this opera. It's the magical scene when, um, when um, La Marraine, which is how you say the fairy godmother in French, when La Marraine turns Cendrillon, Cinderella, you know, the magic of her getting to, uh, she gets all the little fairies to help her get Cinderella turned into a princess. Your hair looks great, by the way. I'm just admiring your hair. Thank you, thank you. I wish it were lavender, like, the, you know, in the, well, you can't tell because you're not seeing this in color, but anyway, when you when you watch the opera, which I hope you will, because it's some of the best, some of the most beautiful music of the opera, I love it, um, is uh, she's all in lavender. It's wonderful costume design, and I love lavender, so. I know you do. Next. So now. We're going to draw um, like a sort of sprout at the top of her head at line three. A sprout? A sprout shape. Okay, let me put a sprout, a sprout. there. Uh, uh, a sprout and a little sprout. This is a very typical, the sprout thing is a very typical manga thing. Everybody has to have a cowlick. So now we're going to draw some guidelines for her hair that are going to come out of the sprout. So one's going to come around and into her eye almost, like not overlapping her head, but into the eye. And the other one's going to come around the back like this. Okay, so now a guideline that goes out of sprout at line three around the back of her head. Wait, hold on. This is a, this is a challenge. I'm, I'm being challenged and it's going to come. I know that it makes it easier for you to think of things in these terms of everything being at line this or line that. It does but help me. At a certain point, oh wait, it can't come all the way to there. It has to come to the, to the, a little bit. It can't pass line four, vertical, vertical line four. It can't overlap. Oh, it line can't. Four. Okay. So it has to stop. You see, that's why it's important. But, um, right. Okay. Yeah. So. But at a certain point, it, it really is helpful to be able to think of things outside of those terms. Yeah, well, when I grow up, I'll do that. In the meantime, while I'm still young, um, I, here, it should, it's always says it can't overlap line four. And well, now on the other it'll be, side, It's hard to get what you want when you think about things entirely in those terms because it's all about... It's more it's, fluid, I get Yeah, it. it's all about feeling. That's what makes things look magic. Uh, like, but I don't have any feeling for drawing, no, but that's I not true. still no, It's like not about it. the feeling you have for drawing. It's about the feeling you have. I've got lots of feelings. It just doesn't render in a in the drawing. Okay, wait, I'm working on it. I don't it. think that's true. I think, you know, when you draw things from your own imagination, they're always really magical. You just need to bring a little bit of that. Okay, well, I'll, I'll try that later. Here, how's that? Is that okay? Yeah, that's great. It looks like a peanut head to me, but It'll sorry. Look, well, that's just because it's a guideline. So now, on this side of the sprout, you're going to draw right on top of this guideline. A little sprout a a little, yeah continuation sprout another fang shape wait where is that one okay, okay. another so but it follows the little circle yes you're gonna you're follow the circle gonna follow the circle and then we're sprout up another one coming down farther number two 
farther and pointier. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then another one coming down, following that line. And this one's littler. I'm going a little bit more down at this point. And underneath that, a little one like this. You can see mine just for, you know. For... Oh, that's good, Mon. Yeah, that's good. Then another one that comes out like this, right underneath that. Okay, oops, I'm sorry. And then you're going to do one that comes down, one that comes out, and then you're going to connect it down to the face like that. One that comes down. Like this. One that comes out. One like that this. comes out like that. Uh-huh. And then? One that connects to the face. And then face. one that connects to the face. Can Perfect. you show the original drawing? Just so that everyone can, if you can move a little closer so that they can really just see the details of the hair there. See? One, two, many sprouts, many sprouts. Okay. Okay. So now, we're going to start on the other side. A sprout like this here. Sprout like that again along the circle and um, up. Then two more sprouts following the circle. They're kind of leaf shapes at this point. You're very good at this. This looks fantastic. Really? Mm -hmm. Okay. And then in my leaf you're going to keep going with your sprouts up and down up and down, coming around the circle like this. You're gonna keep going around your little sprouts. So just down and out and up, down and out and up like that. You're great at this, this looks fantastic. You have a real feeling for it. I have a real feeling for sprouts. You sure do. I don't know, to me it doesn't look looks quite fantastic. It looks fantastic, it looks fantastic. You know what, what's wrong with my sprouts? They're just too even. Um, like I noticed in the original drawing, they're mm -hmm. like some of them are bigger and some of them are little. Oh, I like so. yours. Yours is nice. Okay, so I'm going. So then to... you can draw a couple straight ones at the bottom, right, in this little quadrant below the ear, below line two, next to line four, like this. Draw a couple little ones like that, and then you can connect those back to the rest of the hair, like this. Okay. Back to the rest of the hair, like. So you draw a little oh, sprout. Oh, to her draw, well, it has to, to come four. in more. Don't, don't go past line four, vertical line four. So right here is vertical line four. Right. So just up to, right up to line four, vertical line four. Okay, so now we have finished the hair and the face. We need to put the neck. Let's just the put neck. the neck okay. in so that it doesn't look so weird. So the neck, the first line of the neck is vertical line four. We're not going to do the full length of the neck. We're just going to put in where the neck is. And it goes, let's make it go down to line three for now. So the the, the vertical line four coming out of the ear down to line three, that is the back of the neck. And then the inside of the neck is in between, in between the chin and vertical line three. The chin. And how long is it? We're going to make the neck longer when we draw the body, but just make it a little longer than line three for now. Okay, so sadly... This is where we must stop for today. We've been doing because, this for an hour and a half, I think. Because it's just, well, no, probably an hour. But over um, over. but anyway, but so here we are. Okay. Um, we will do the body and the clothes next time. Yeah. Do you want to just show the body, the clothes, the feathers? It's going to be a big, it's, it's going to be a big project. It's, it's going to be a track. And then we'll ink it. And then maybe we'll color it. That would be cool. You could yeah. color on this one, right? Because you're on good paper I, here. Um, I'm on, I'm on all right paper. I don't think I can watercolor on this, but I could. Okay. Well, just, not with the pens that I use, but I could color it with colored pencil. I'm okay. not the best at colored pencil. Okay. But I'm not bad anyway, at it. um, so don't forget, if you can, please make a donation for any amount. One dollar is good too. Um, to um seven one seven dash seven seven, and then you chat you type in time in. A T I M E I N. That would be really helpful for us because it allows us to keep giving program to all kids, um, particularly kids who don't have the opportunity to do this normally. Can I ask a question about how the text message thing yeah, works? Yeah, sure. So you 
Did you type in what's the number you? It's seven one seven dash seven one seven seven seven. You don't have to put the dash. It goes in automatically. Seven one seven seven seven. And then you type in time in, and then you type in also the amount when, when the, in your message. Uh, you when type you, in no time no in. no when you when you type that in. Mm -hmm. uh, a new menu will come up. Oh, so if you text time in one word um, to that number, then it'll... It, it'll open a donation menu for oh, you, fantastic. and you can make a donation. Great. And then, uh, anyway, we'll see you probably tomorrow with the rest of this drawing. Okay? So, talk to you soon. Bye. Bye.